Hi, before we get to today's presentation, I have to take a moment for a very important announcement. For the last few weeks, I've been telling you that we were going to do a personal appearance on March 14th and 15th of 2020 at a gun show. As of today, with one day's notice, they've canceled that due to coronavirus panic. Unfortunately, that means I can only give you one day's notice. The gun show has been canceled. I dislike promising that I'm going to do something and then have powers beyond my control canceling that. So, in the interest of consolation, on Saturday, March 14th at 1900, some of the crew and I will be out to dinner at Paddington's Pizza on Pine Street in Salem, Oregon. Not near as fun as a gun show, but at least we'll be there. And of course, those members of the crew that were single didn't want to disappoint those thousands of... Hundreds? Dozens? Okay, those one or two women that actually wanted to come out and meet them. So anyway, come out and say hi. Should be some fun, although of course not nearly as much fun as the gun show. So with that, let's get to today's presentation. Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire here in the background. Today we're comparing the M1A, that's the semi-auto commercially available street legal version of an M14, and the M1, this word right here. And before we go any farther, we have to discuss how do you pronounce that word? Well, in many ways it's like tomato and tomato, Caribbean and Caribbean, Bernie Sanders and are you kidding? Different sources indicate different pronunciations. I'm going to pronounce it Garand because that's the way I've most often heard it. So with that, let's get started. There are exceptions, but most of the time an M1 Garand is caliber 30-06. And most of the time an M1A is 7.62 NATO. They'll also fire 308 Winchester ammunition. What's the difference between 308 and 7.62 NATO? That's a topic for another time. But let's take a close-up look at these cartridges. From your left to right are 9x19, 5.56 NATO, 7.62 NATO, and 30-06. Both have the same diameter projectile, and you can see that the 7.62 NATO is shorter than the 30-06. It may appear that the casing of the 7.62 is of greater diameter than the casing of the 30-06. That's an optical illusion. At the base, they're both the same diameter. So we see that the 7.62 NATO is slightly smaller than the 30-06, but how do the two compare for power? Well, if we were going to make a fair comparison of the power of the two cartridges, we'd need different rifles. These two have different barrel lengths. If I read my tape measure correctly, the M1A has a barrel length of 22 and a quarter, while the Garand is 24 inches. And that extra inch and three quarter of barrel might make some difference. However, today we're not comparing the ammunition specifically, we're comparing these two rifles. And so a comparison of power is fair. So let's go to the chronograph and see what we can learn. And we'll start with the Garand, which I have loaded with military issue Lake City 30-06 ammunition. Twenty-six sixty-nine. 2681, 2690, 2640, 2686, and 2679. Now let's see how the M1A compares. And now the M1A, which is loaded with military issue Lake City 762 NATO ammunition. 2735. 2739-2759-2804. 2761, 2720, and 2754. Let's try some different types of ammo. Now I've got the Grand loaded with Remington Green and Yellow Box 30-06 150 grain pointed soft point. 
2861. 2868. 2810. 2815. 2821. And 2828. Now let's see how the M1A compares to that. And now I have the M1A loaded with Remington Green and Yellow Box 308 Winchester 150 grain pointed soft point. Twenty seven ninety one. Twenty eight oh five. Twenty seven seventy eight. Twenty seven eighty one. Twenty seven seventy four. And twenty eight oh two. Let's go crunch the numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers and here they are. With our Lake City ammunition for 7.62 NATO, we got a mean velocity of 27.53, and for the 30 odd 6, 26.74. That means that the 7.62 NATO is ahead by 79 feet per second. But with our Remington ammunition for 7.62 NATO, which was really 308 Winchester, we got a mean velocity of 27.88, and for the 30 odd 6, 28.33. So the 30 odd 6 is ahead by 45 feet per second. Now, differences of 79 feet per second, 45 feet per second might be significant when you're talking about handguns with velocities of 800 or 900 or 1,000 feet per second. But with rifle ammunition where the velocities are above 2,600 feet per second, these numbers aren't going to make much difference. So our question, which of these two rifles is more powerful, looks like it has two answers. One, which one is more powerful is really going to depend on your ammunition choices. And two, no matter what your ammunition choices are, the difference might not be enough to make any difference. So how do these two rifles compare in terms of accuracy? Well, I'll shoot the target on your left with the M1A, the target on your right with the M1 Garand. Now there's a caveat here. Neither of these rifles are mine. They both belong to a colleague of mine, so neither of them have been zeroed for me. So we want to concentrate on the size of the group, not necessarily the location of it. And I'll shoot from 60 yards. I'm going to shoot offhand from 60 yards. Now, before you send me any hate mail, there's an explanation for this. First, offhand does not mean shooting with your non-dominant hand. It means shooting from a standing, unsupported position. Secondly, Many people will say that the comparison of accuracy is rendered invalid when I shoot offhand because I add too much of a variable to the equation. Well, in this particular case, both the M1A and the M1 Garand have well-deserved reputations for being highly accurate platforms. The real question is not how the rifles compare to each other in terms of accuracy, but how do they compare to each other in terms of accuracy when in the hands of the average shooter? If I were to shoot from a bench rest position, then things like the weight and the balance would be for the most part taken out of the equation. So in this case, comparing the two, shooting offhand is called for. So with that, I'll start with the M1A. Now let's try the Garand. And now the Garand.
let's take a look at the targets. Well, here's our targets, and they show us a couple of things. First, remember, neither of these rifles are mine. They belong to a colleague. They were zeroed by and for someone else, and I'm not going to change my colleague zero. And we see that just because something is zeroed for one person does not necessarily mean it's zeroed for the next. We also see that with the M1A, I've got a pretty good group, one flyer, that's just me, but the group is significantly better than the group I got with the Garand. Now, of the two platforms, I have a lot more experience with the Garand than I do the M1A. I owned a Garand at one time. When I was in the military, I had the opportunity to shoot the Army's qualification course with a Garand. I qualified expert. I got, if I remember right, 39 out of 40. But the Army's qualification course is fired, depending on where you are, from a fighting position where you have a rest or from the prone. When firing offhand, a lot of shooters, myself included, find that the Garand doesn't fit us as well as the M1A does, and these targets show the results of that. Now I've changed locations. But when I'm doing that side-by-side -side drill, even though I'm shooting offhand, I'm trying to do slow, deliberate, well-aimed fire. What kind of results would I get if I were trying to shoot a lot faster? What kind of results would I get if I added a magazine change to the drill? Let's try that and see what happens. But first, let me show you a close-up of how these rifles are loaded. The way the Garand loads is interesting. Pull the charging handle back, and the bolt locks to the rear. Then engage the safety. And then you'll use this eight-shot clip, which locks into the rifle. Now, you may notice that when I put that clip in that the bolt comes forward a little bit. Usually that round will stop it. Sometimes it doesn't and your thumb gets caught in there, giving you a case of what's called Garand thumb. Then, pull the charging handle back and let go, and it should chamber around. Sometimes it doesn't, and you end up hitting that charging handle forward. You'll see that if you watch the movie Saving Private Ryan. Now, the way this rifle unloads is also interesting. Pull the charging handle to the rear, and try to catch that round, pocket that, and then hit your clip release, and usually you're not going to catch that and you end up with the rounds on the ground but what's even more interesting about this is the way it reloads once you fired it until it's empty the way the grand reloads is very interesting i have one round in it and when i shoot that last round like most auto loaders the bolt will lock back but what happens to the clip that's inside it let's find out it pops out of the rifle locking the bolt back put the new clip in and you're ready to go. By contrast, the way the M1A loads is not very interesting. Pull the charging handle to the rear, hold it, engage the slide lock, engage the safety, and then load with a detachable 20-shot box magazine. Unlike an AR where the magazine goes into a mag well, the M1A will load similar to the way a Mini-14 or an AK platform loads, where the magazine is rocked into place. Then pull the charging handle back, release it, chambering the round. Now this being typical of semi-autos, when I fire the last round, the bolt will lock back. Then you release the magazine with a mag release behind the magazine, and then reload with another 20-shot detachable box magazine. The M1A also lends itself to top-off loading, much more so than the Garand does. So now that we see the loading and reloading procedures, I'll go back 25 yards and I'll shoot the target on your left with the Garand and the target on your right with the M1A, putting a mag change into the equation and shooting as fast as I think I can hit. And let's see how the platforms compare. And we'll start with the Garand. Now let's try that with the M1A. Now the M1A has 20 shot detachable box magazines, but in the interest of consistency, I have my magazines loaded with eight rounds each.
let's take a look at the targets. So comparing the results of the Grand and the M1A, the group with the M1A might be a little bit better, but because the M1A has detachable box magazines that lend themselves to top off reloading, and because they're 20 shot magazines, the M1A can put a lot more rounds downrange in a lot less time. So far, what we've seen is that comparing the M1 Garand and the M1A, they both have very well-deserved reputations for high levels of accuracy, ruggedness, dependability. But that accuracy, when applied to being in the hands of the average shooter, the M1A seems to be the winner. In terms of power, that depends a lot more on ammo than it does the rifles themselves. But no matter which ammo you select, there isn't gonna be much difference. In terms of the ability to put rounds on target quickly, the M1A is the clear winner. And that seems to be the bottom line here. The M1A is the clear winner. However, although I've tried to make this comparison as fair as I can, the question comes up, how relevant is it? Let me see if I can explain what I mean. The M1A, or the military version, the M14, is a much newer design than the Garand. In fact, it was intended to replace the Garand as the United States military's main battle rifle, so we would hope that it would be an improvement. And it seems to be. But if you look at the context in which these two rifles were used, the M1 Garand was in the American arsenal for a long time, but its main use was in the Second World War. And look at the rifles that it was going up against. For example, in the Wehrmacht, now of course they had submachine guns, but so did the American military. The Wehrmacht had the Sturmgewehr, but in all reality, that rifle was never issued in very large numbers. So your main straight leg infantryman in the Wehrmacht was usually armed with a bolt action rifle. And that's what the M1 Garand would have gone up against most often. While by contrast, even though M14s are being used in the American military even to this day, in the time that the M14 was the main battle rifle, the rifle it would have gone up against would have been an SKS, or even more often, some version of an AK platform. So how will these two rifles, the Garand and the M1A, compare against their contemporaries? Let's see if we can put that to the test. So we've got two new targets set up at 25 yards. I'm going to shoot the M1 Garand, and Chuck is going to shoot an 8mm Mauser bolt-action rifle, five-shot magazine that he'll reload with strip clips. And dressing in some German camo does help him shoot a little better. Now, the M1 holds eight rounds, but I've got it loaded with seven, and then I'll reload with one eight-shot clip, so we'll each fire 15 rounds. And let's see who can put those rounds on target faster. On your command. Fire! Even though I had to clear a malfunction, I got my rounds off a lot faster. Now let's take a look at the target. So here's Chuck's target with the 8mm Mauser, here's my target with the M1 Garand. A lot faster and significantly more accurate. Now the first thing someone's going to say is, well that's because I'm a better shooter than Chuck. Well I'd love to tell you that I am, but last week we went to a shooting competition where he and I got the exact same score. So we see in this venue, the Garand is the clear winner over its main competition. Now we'll put up some new targets and let's put the M1A through this same drill. Now Chuck's gonna shoot the M1A and I'm going to shoot an AK platform, specifically a Wasser 1063. The M1A, again, has a well-deserved reputation for accuracy and is a far more accurate rifle at long distance. But we're only shooting half-size silhouettes at 25 yards. Now the M1A has 20-shot detachable box magazines and Chuck is loaded with 20 rounds per mag. 
AK platform rifles typically have 30 shot magazines, but for the sake of consistency, I'm also loaded with only 20 rounds per mag. On your command. Fire. Let's take a look at the targets. Obviously the AK is the clear winner. And remember the AK has 30 shot magazines. But before we start stroking our AKs too much, remember part of this result is due to Chuck's familiarity or lack thereof with the M1A platform. So let's put up some new targets and try this drill again. Now Chuck's gonna shoot the AK, I'll shoot the M1A. He has two 30 shot magazines loaded with 20 rounds each. I have two 20 shot magazines loaded with 20 rounds each. On your command. Fire! Pretty close in terms of time. Let's take a look at the targets. And this time our scores are a lot closer in terms of group and time. So M1 Grand versus M1A. As I said before, power pretty equal. Accuracy, both are outstanding, but in the hands of the average shooter, the M1A might be a little bit better. The ability to put more rounds down range in less time, M1A is a lot better. Comparing the two, the M1A is the clear winner. Comparing them in the vein of shooting them alongside their contemporaries, then the winner isn't so clear. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the M1 Grand versus M1A video.